Welcome back to Brazen Brits. My name is Lawrence. Natalie is behind the camera here because my hands are dirty. So everyone thinks that RV life is all vacations and sitting out by the beach and doing all this fun stuff. Well, every now and then you've got to get your hands dirty. Now I'm going to be honest, I haven't done any of the work so far except for move a wheel. My friend Rob here has and we are going to repack the bearings on our rig. Now apparently I'm going to do this either once a year or every 12,000 miles. So you can think 12 and 12. I haven't. It's been two years since we've done this and so we really do need to get them done. Um, so anyway, let's roll the intro and then we'll get right in. It really makes me wonder. Real quick, the things that you will need to go and get before you start doing this. One is you need the new grease seals, the bearing seals, bearing seals, um, uh, for our Dexter 7,000 pound axles, uh, cut, we... Cut, 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 sorry. They're actually 5,200 pound axles, I didn't know that until I got crawled under there and looked. So we actually have the Dexter 5,200 pound axles. Uh, Rob was saying that on his uh, other trailer, not, uh, not, camper van trailer just the normal trailer um, they are actually the same thing so if it helps anyone it's 442109 is the part number because we struggled to find this. You will need three or four tubes of we're using the red and tacky grease there's other things available you can use and we got four cans of brake cleaner uh, because you want to clean everything up once you've got it out and then you will need a bearing packer uh, we're using this one Rob has a better one that he doesn't have here. I don't think he likes this one very much, but this was like $7 compared to like $45 for the other one. So get the other one if you have the money. You're gonna need a ton of paper towels, ton of them. Uh, and then there's a few other little bits. Obviously you need to be able to take the wheel off. So you need the jack, you need the breaker bar, uh, torque wrench to put all of that up, all of that stuff. Um, but this is the most important. All right, this isn't a tutorial on how to jack up a trailer. We're just gonna jack this up. The really, the bit that I really wanna to get to is actually the bearing stuff. So there's lots of other videos you can use to go and figure out how to jack up a trailer. So we're gonna to get to the bearing part where we're taking the wheel off. So let's fast forward. All right, the first thing we need to do is just tap this. And in here you have this. Okay, we have this clip. Pop that clip off. There is a nut here, should only be finger tight, but if it's too tight, it creates too much heat. It's right in it, Rob. Yes. Alright, and then we have a uh a good way to do that instead of putting that screwdriver in there right. is to pop that drum with your with your heel of your hand. Like this. Uh, comes right out. So this is the first bearing. We have the washer nut there. First bearing, you can tell that grease is dirty. It's pretty good condition, the bearing. So uh, I'm not gonna replace the bearing. We're just repacking them. But if you did buy new bearings, I think they were like 30, 40 bucks if you wanted to change the actual bearings out. So that's the first one. That looks pretty good. Okay, now this is the hub. Um, so these are the brakes. Um, this is the inside of the hub, which we're gonna clean out, but honestly, everything looks okay here right now. This is where it gets real messy. Um, so we just clean all this stuff out. You can check the spindle. Is it called a spindle? Yeah, so one thing we'll check whilst we're here is you wanna check, there is a, a, a seal on the bottom of this. If that is broken, the grease will go into the brakes and then obviously your brakes are not gonna work. So we're checking for that, but this is fine. It's just brake dust everywhere, it's all good. And this spindle is fine. You can look for um, like tarnishing on here. If it's overheated or anything, it will go a weird kind of color. The same thing when we clear this out, we're gonna look for that in here, but this looks fine. I'm happy with that. So you need this tool. Seal puller. This is a seal puller. So all you do is you put this right under this ridge here on the uh, the thing bearing. Now you are going to destroy the seal doing this. 
actually I did pretty well but I did destroy it uh, so that's a seal this is the thing this is the stuff that I said earlier that you need to go and get before you place because you can't reuse these especially when you bend it doing that all right and this is the other bearing again this actually looks all right so I can see there's a bit of heat marks in here I don't know if you can see it on camera so this has got hot at some point but it's still fine it's still usable um, which is good because I didn't buy the bearing so if we had a problem we would have to go out and get bearings and the closest place is about 40 minutes away so happy with that so here's where it gets really messy because now you have to get all of this old grease out even though it looks okay we're completely cleaning everything up we're getting all the old grease all, all the old grease out of everything uh, and then we're going to repack it later so this is by far the messiest part of the job paper towels are your friend so in addition to checking the inside of the bearings you need to check the races which are on the inside of the hub rob just told me that i didn't know so they're races so the same thing there if it gets hot or the bearing seize then they start rubbing on the races uh, on the inside here so just check that for any wear or tarnishing something like that all right here's where the brake cleaner comes in we're probably going to use this whole can just cleaning this so you need to make sure that all of the inside is clean and all of that shaft and the races are clean um, so I'm going to spend a few minutes doing this. All right, time for the bearing packer. So as you can see, we've already used this. Just throw that on there. Push this down tight. Now this one you have to use with a grease gun. The other one doesn't need the grease gun, does it? You just use the grease in it. So, All right, so that's down pretty much hand tight. Throw the grease gun on. Like that. Get it somewhere where you can see it. And then this is pumping the grease into the bearing and then you should see it come out we can fast forward so you can start to see the grease and it's dirty so we want to keep doing this until the grease runs the nice pink color that we have now with the fresh stuff this is leaking a bit so with the fresh stuff I'm just going to use that we don't want to waste it we can just run that around the race here. Hopefully you can see that. This is all the old stuff that's being pushed through as the new stuff comes in, so you need to get rid of all of this. Nice. This was much easier when you were doing it. My life was a lot easier when it was you that did all this. So actually your top tip is just pay someone else to do this. Basically, just pay someone else if you're doing <laughs> this, because it's really dirty. Now Rob was saying that with uh, with this um, bearing packer, it's not as good as the other one because it doesn't push them, it's not really pushing it through the bearings, it's all kind of falling out the end. So the other one is better, if you want to pay four times more. All right, so we're done packing this. Most of the old grease has come out. I can see the fresh stuff coming through. So this is all good stuff here, but I've put some around the inside of the hub already. And I would not learn from my example on doing this on a public picnic bench. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Do's and don'ts of Do's campground and don'ts, etiquette, yeah. Lawrence. Campground, don't do this. I've learned the hard way and I'm going to end up cleaning this table for the next three hours now, but too late, I'm doing it. Okay, freshly packed bearing, drop it in. Straight. All right, I'm getting ready to put the grease seal in now, so I'm just clearing around the edge to make sure there's no grease on that. So it can sit in there. All right, it's time to put the seal in. So we have the bearing dropped in. We've just cleaned up the edge. So we're gonna put the seal in. This, I've never done this before, and apparently this is pretty easy to screw up. So all we're gonna do is put this on here. We have this block of wood. This needs to be absolutely flat. Um, and so we're gonna put this on here, and we have to hammer this seal in the same all the way around until it goes down. So, wish me luck. Oh yeah. Nice. Did it. Right, it's completely flush now. So you can see that that's completely flush. The bearings are in. I didn't mess up. You didn't, well done. All right, so now it's time to go back, get the uh, small front bearing and we're just going to repack that exactly the same as we did a moment ago. Before we put the hub back on and then put the other small bearings in, I'm just going to grease up the spindle. Some fresh grease here all the way round. All right, now we just need to throw the hub back on. 
<laughs> All right, with our freshly packed front bearing. Is it the right way? <laughs> and push that bearing in at the same time. There you go. See how much more it went in? Yeah. All right, and after you've cleaned the uh, the washer and the nut. There's the washer. Now, as I said at the beginning, this needs to be hand tight. However, in order to push the bearings in, we are gonna tighten it a bit just to force it in and then we'll bring it back out. All right, so I'm just tightening this up and as I'm doing it, I'm gonna spin the hub so that it gets the bearings completely in level. What you're looking for is seated. Seated, the word I'm looking for is seated. So I'm gonna keep tightening until the hub starts to get really hard to move and then I'm gonna undo this and then just do it up finger tight. All right, we're almost done. So I'm just gonna connect this up here and we have to fill that entire cavity with grease now. So it's sealed on the back and the front with the bearings and we're just gonna fill up everything in between. And again, as we're doing this, just so that it disperses right, we're just gonna spin the hub whilst we're pushing that through. Now, you know when you're done with this because it will start pushing through the bearings. Okay, I'll probably. All right, final thing, just to put the nut retainer on, put it all back together. All right, so the nut actually has to be uh, in a very specific place, which is why I couldn't get this back on. So you need to keep fiddling with the nut. The nut doesn't need to be that tight, so it's not a big problem. So just keep fiddling with that until you can get it in. Rob told me to hit it with my purse and then it went on. Had a bit of a problem there and then Natalie turned the camera off and it clipped in. So anyway, that was harder than I thought it was gonna be. All right, are we done? Throw the cap back on. All right, just throw this cap back on and then I'll get Rob to put the wheel on. <laughs> All right, so that was really easy. It probably took me about an hour per wheel. Um, as you probably know, this is my first time doing this. I was very nervous, so thank you, Rob, for walking me through it no and problem. all the little tricks of the trade that you said and all the stuff. So uh, I would easily do this again. I'm gonna list, leave a list of everything that we bought below um, so that you can make sure that you're prepared. Um, thank you for watching. I will leave a video up here that we think you might like. Um, if you could hit subscribe, that would be great. Obviously like this video. And if you'd like to become a brassiere, like Rob here, and become a member and support a couple of tits, then please hit the join button. And a thanks button. Oh, and there's a thanks button as there well is, we've yeah. enabled. So go check out the thanks button below if this helped. All right, we'll see you next week.